Hello and welcome to Fifth Gear. Now, normally, I like to have a leisurely breakfast. Think about the day ahead, make some plans, but not this morning. I couldn't wait to get out the front door. I kept on having these thoughts about you know, 600 brake horsepower, 196 miles an hour, letters like GTR, RS. Want to know what I'm on about? Well, pull out just a bit wider. Go on, a bit wider. There you go. This is the latest Porsche 911 GT3 RS, a stripped-out ultimate performance version of the world's most celebrated and enduring sports car. It costs £141,000. And this is the Nissan GTR Nismo. The standard GTR is bonkers enough, but adding the word Nismo sticks another firecracker up its exhaust and sticks another 70 grand on the price, bringing it in line with the Porsche. It also has the same power-to-weight ratio and the legendary Nissan Skyline heritage to draw upon. So on paper, it looks a close competitor. But is it really good enough to steal the Porsche's crown? German precision and pedigree versus Japanese innovation and uh, PlayStation. Sadly, I can't drive both. So former F1 driver Karun Chanduk has manfully offered to help. Which one do you want, mate? Do I get a choice? No, I'm in the Nissan. Oh, we'll be performing three tests to discover which of these cars is the most accomplished all-rounder. First, a drag race. Between them, the GT3 and GTR have got over 1,100 horsepower. But that's no use if you can't put the power down on the track. So ultimately, this is a test of traction and acceleration. Now, I've got a 3.8-litre V6 twin-turbo, which kicks out 600 horsepower, it's front engine. But, of course, I've got four-wheel drive, so if I can't win this one, then I'm doing something wrong. I've actually got a slightly bigger motor than Jason's got in the GTR. This one's a 4-litre, but I've actually got 80 horsepower less than him. However, I am 220 kilos lighter than the Nissan, and that should help me get off the line. What's going to be tricky, though, is we've got damp Welsh conditions, which means his four-wheel drive is just going to give him that edge for the initial launch. In the right conditions, the Porsche can get to 62 in just 3.2 seconds, using its launch control computer to perfectly balance power and traction. So how does that compare to the Nissan? Well, fact is, we just don't know. Now, interestingly enough, there are no official Nord 62 times for this because they don't like to publish them or they don't want to publish them. Likewise, they don't tell you this launch control in this car. But I know there is because I've spoken to someone. So I'm going to get everything configured. Now, my launch control is super easy. He's going to be here a while by the time he dials in his settings. I press PDK Sport, put my foot on the brake, right foot to the floor on the throttle and just launch it. German efficiency. That should be it. Eventually, I declared myself ready. Let the games begin. <laughs> that four-wheel drive is helping it, but now look at me go! Look at me go! Yeah, 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 yeah! Wow! The four-wheel drive gave him the launch. But then, once I got out of first gear, the Porsche just shot off. It was amazing, that lightweight. However, it seems my celebrations were a bit premature, because over in Nissan land, there had been an operator error. I bet I missed the gear. I thought I was in automatic mode, but I was in the manual. I'm not sure why I defaulted to French at that point, but anyway, I'd messed up by missing a gear. Fortunately for me, it was best of three. Here we go, flags up. Whoa! Good gear change then, good off the line. He's launched out time much better. And we blasted him. With my gears sorted, the mighty GTR had got its power down, and I was back in the game. Third and deciding run. Let's see what the Porsche can do on this one. <laughs> Nailed it! Well, 
Round one to you. Yeah, do you know what? I've got to drive hard for the rest of the day because I think... Uh, I think that's going to be tough to beat. Now, I'd like to say that Challenge 1, a drag race, was a close-fought battle. But it wasn't. Thanks mainly to its four-wheel drive system, the Nismo was the Bismo and blew the Porsche into the weeds. But in Test 2, the Porsche has a chance to equalise because we're about to head out onto the road. Crazy amounts of power are going to be of no use in this test. It's all about comfort and cup holders. These cars might be track-focused, but come on! You've shelled out over 140 grand. You'd want to drive them on the road as well. So now we want to find out how civilised they are as everyday companions. First, the Nissan. So this is the Nismo version, which yep. is obviously the performance arm of Nissan. Yep. It's been around now for 34 years. Check you out with your research. Yeah. I'm a geek, I'm a geek. But, you know, it's nearly twice as much money as the standard GTR. Are you getting twice as much stuff, apart from a Nismo badge? Right. OK, it's got upright suspension. It hasn't got carbon brakes. And don't expect loads more power. Just 30 horsepower as it happens. And although there's loads of carbon fibre, that only saves 27 kilos. In fact, the top speed is identical at 196 miles an hour. Where else does a 7K come from? You know, 150 grand for a car, it's got to be super special. And this just yeah. isn't. But, like, all of that console and stuff doesn't look like it's 150 grand for the car, is it? No. And there's worse news for the Nismo, because early versions of the GTR, which was launched in 2008, look almost identical and can now be yours for little more than 30 grand. And do you know what? The seats are comfortable. They are. Yeah, you're not moving around and stuff, but it's just a stiff suspension, isn't it? This is as as comfy as it will be. I mean, comfort <laughs> mode. My, my bum's already hurting. <laughs> You've got a couple of seats in the back, which you don't have in the Porsche, I suppose. So that's definitely a bonus. Yeah. You've got cup holders and bits and pieces, so it's got... They've gone for a bit of practicality. Yeah, and then we've got all this GTR nonsense, all this G-meters. What do we want that for? What well, do we know? I what can we tell not... you that you are doing a 0.15G of deceleration for the... Bridge and, there. And, and the relevance of that is? <laughs> I don't know. To be honest, this seems like a lot of unnecessary information and a bit of a gimmick. It does pull, doesn't it? You know, the, the, uh, the you engine know, as, as a thing massive. to drive, it's impressive. But I'm not sure. I, I mean, it's a bit kind of in your face, boy racer. Yeah. Arguably, I am, but that's not what I want to project. Though. It's definitely got some waft. So, the Nissan's reasonably practical, but the interior and exterior simply don't cut it for a £150,000 car. Time for the Porsche and my first impressions. I do feel a bit exposed in green out in the open roads. A bit yeah. of Yeah. It's me! We're definitely announcing our arrival, aren't we? I mean, the green seat belt is just one step too far, isn't it? Thankfully, the GT3 comes in eight other colours. So what about the ride quality? I mean, the GTR was quite stiff and it's not a, not a comfortable ride. It's probably the understatement of the year. It's not much different, is it? It's not a massive difference. No, it's not a massive it? difference. <laughs> no. I mean, inside the cabin... It's um, noisier. It's noisier, yeah, but... Much more road, road rumble. Yeah. I do like how the cup holders are hidden away, though. They're somewhere in there. Oh, Typical there Porsche beauty. Oh, isn't I like it? that. I do like these little door Yeah, they're, they're, cool, really, they're really cute. And do you know what? The little chinks of stitching, I mean, you know, the, all, a lot of this is all extras. We've got, what, paint, two and a half grand. You know, these painted air vents around, they're, they're extra. Yeah. White dials are extra. Carbon brakes, nearly seven grand. That's a lot of money for the carbon brakes, actually. In fact, our GT3 had £18,000 worth of extras on it, whereas the Nissan had none. Nevertheless, I was definitely warming to the Porsche's on-road charms. I mean, we're ticking along here. We're doing, you know, 50 miles an hour. It's 2,000 RPM. It's shifted up into seventh gear. And I feel like I could just try this every day. Like, the seat's comfy, you know, on, on the little cambers and, and sort of 
undulations. It really follows the road. In fact, the ride quality of the Porsche is about the same as the Nissan. However, they are miles apart when it comes to second-hand prices. If you take a 10-year-old version of this, the 997 version of the G GTRS, they're selling for more now than they cost back in the day. You'd have to spend 110 grand to buy one. Which is amazing. Actually. They all hold their value. And go that way. And go up. You're not going to get that with a Nissan. No. Do you know what? A bit of car envy was creeping in by now. You know, later when we get to drive, I've got, obviously got to drive the Nissan, then you're going to... Can, can I have it? Can... No. No. You just stay in your little four-wheel drive, right? No, I, you know, just for research, I think... No. I can... No. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of our second test, which car is better for everyday road driving? So in terms of ride quality, nothing in it. Both are quite yeah. harsh, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, they're both built for the track and just just not really for bumpy roads. But I think in terms of interiors, this, this one's a clear winner, isn't it? Just the quality, I thought, of the dash and all those bits and pieces inside, just to step up for the same money. Feels special. So that's one all. One more test to go. So now we're going to frighten each other to death by taking these cars out for some full-blooded hot laps. And with the scores at one all, the winner of this test takes the overall victory. We'll start with the Nismo. But before we fire up the stopwatch, a quick recce lap is called for. Oh, gee, a fire test. She's a bit sniffy, isn't she? So, JP, we're getting these tyres nice and warm. Um, is four-wheel drive on track? What do you reckon? Well, I reckon it will oversteer if provoked, because I think it fires a load of power Burr. to the rear. In fact, we've got some sort of torque split. Torque split reacts in milliseconds to correct handling issues by moving power to the axle that needs it most. It has a lot of torque through the rear, isn't it? Uh, can you see the split? Yeah, I can. You keep an eye on the road, will you? <laughs> it's interesting because it's all controlled electronically. It's not something that we can adjust the torque split. Like, you haven't got a, a button on the steering wheel, for example, to adjust that. It's just happening. It's just a brain doing its thing. I'll tell you what, though, it's quick, isn't it? It's got grunt, doesn't it? We've got these chicanes here, and being an extra 220 kilos, that's going to be a little bit tricky, isn't it, to manoeuvre it? as well as the Porsche. You're looking like you have to concentrate quite hard here. You can feel it's got steel brakes on. Yeah, that's going to be a disadvantage, isn't it, to the Porsche? Should we see how quick it is? We can't do something. Right, on the cone. Curb there. Mm -hmm. Ah, a bit of understeer, see? It doesn't change the direction as nimbly as you'd like, does it? Let's see what it's like in power. Yeah, now the tyres are coming up a bit now. Yeah. I mean, that's 120 mile an hour down there. Yeah. Last couple of corners. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was twi I probably left a little bit on the table there. 45-27. All right. So how does the Porsche compare? Well, I think our in-car reactions give you a pretty good idea. That sounds absolutely amazing, doesn't it? Oh, it's just balanced. It's just, it's just like, gently... I tell you what, JP, I mean, it's just a nice car. It just feels nice and, and balanced. It does what you want it to do. You can flick the steering wheel, bounce over the curb, you flick the wheel there. Oh, man, it's... I must say, though, I felt like the, the GTR accelerated better out of the chicane, didn't it? That torque. Maybe not that surprising, given the Porsche's only got 470 newton metres of torque, compared to a massive 652 for the Nissan. But this one, just with the brakes, you can brake so deep. 
and the front just gets hooked up. Go on, let's have a little go and see what that right, let's go. That's properly wow. good, isn't it? It's good on the brakes, isn't it? Those carbon ceramics are just... And on the kerb, look, you can just hustle it over the change of direction. The electronics do kick in a little bit, though, over the kerbs. I love that up change. Boom! It's a proper race car, this thing. I'll tell you what, even though it's stiff, it's got some compliance, hasn't it? I feel like I can... I'm so controlled in it. It's not on edge. It doesn't feel like it's going to bite me. Cross the line! So, Jason, in that, you did a 45.27, but you're refusing to tell me what I've done in this. Well, only because it's nice to reveal it. Oh, come on, then. The time in this is an impressive 43.39. Oh, wow. That's oh, nearly two seconds. Two seconds. But do you know what? Are you surprised? No. There's two things. One is it's got carbon ceramic brakes on this one, which is a slightly unfair comparison, but it's 220 kilos lighter, which is a big mass, and it's just more agile, isn't it, in the corners? I mean, it's epic. I love that car. Love I, it. I, I'd have to say, out of all the, you know, cars I've driven, road track day cars, that's got to be one of the best engineered ones I've ever driven. It does everything I wanted it to do. But, you know, we can't be unfair fair on this. No. This is a great car, fabulous engine, loads of torque, four-wheel drive system, no. but in this company, there's only one clear winner. GT3 RS.